When I was pregnant, they also didn't give me enough food. They don't give any pregnant woman enough food. I was always hungry and I lost so much weight. I was six months pregnant and I had dropped down to 120 pounds and my stomach was sunken in. You couldn't even tell I was pregnant. Incarcerated women and formerly incarcerated women are not being talked about enough. Their needs are not being addressed. There's not the resources going into figuring out a solution and, and moving forward and actually supporting and changing and ending the cycle. So we know that on any given day, there are nearly 219,000 women who are behind bars in the United States. We know that this number has been growing over the last four decades as a result of many intersecting social, political, and economic forces. We also know that 75% of these women are younger than 45 years old, so they're of childbearing age. And we know that nearly two-thirds of them are already mothers and the primary caregivers to young children. The majority of these women have been sexually active with men in the months prior to their incarceration, and thus some of these women will enter jail or prison pregnant. But we actually have no idea how many women that is, and we have no idea what the outcomes of those pregnancies are. This absence of data is reflective of the broader neglect of women's gender-specific health care and family needs in the criminal legal system. Yes, we need to talk about health, education, poverty, and racism, and the fact that we live in a patriarchal society that thinks abusing women is fine, <laughs> and that women are just supposed to deal with that, and that's supposed to be a part of our everyday life. But without any resources to heal from that or hold, hold people accountable to the really pain that they inflict on women, and then it comes out in all of these other ways. When I went into labor, I had to wait in the ambulance while the officers and the EMTs argued back and forth because I did not have my prison ID yet. The EMT was arguing that we had to rush me to the hospital because my blood pressure was dropping rapidly. This is a good example of how control trumps everything else in prison. It outweighs reason, health, and safety. We need to share information and educate ourselves and inform the public. Me being in jail, I was just sad all the time. Like if I had somebody to come and check on me that I felt genuinely cared about me, I probably would have a different outcome with um, the way I trust authority figures or anyone that was in jail because I didn't even trust the people that came in via the programs that said they would help me. And I think depression is inherent just based on being incarcerated. Now you put on top of that that you're pregnant, yes. you might be having a baby while you're incarcerated, what's going to happen with that baby and who's going to keep that baby kind of makes that even more severe depression and that's where we need to educate the staff, both medical, psychological and the security staff on what those issues are and the level of severity. We were denied funding from a local co-op that has a funding opportunity and the feedback they gave us was that they could not understand how breast milk was a food source. It breaks my heart because I cannot believe what year this is and that somebody yeah. feels like that's legitimate feedback. There's only so, much, so many times you can watch somebody be so dehumanized that they literally are just a number and maybe a last name before you start to see the world in a really, really awful way. Mm -hmm. And so for me, the reality was that I made the choice with a group of people that we need to stop and we need to regroup and we need to come together and find a way to do this work so that there's health and wellness for everyone. Well, and I'll put the radical thought in the room that maybe we should just stop locking pregnant people up. Yeah. <laughs> My takeaway, there's a lot of work to be done, but there's a lot of good people that care and are willing to do the work and um, step by step. And that's how we'll do it. We'll do it step by step. And we'll continue to, to meet and share information and educate people. Being here today has given me a hope. It's empowered me to know that there are other people that are fighting on the same front. And to know that we can start to build alliances with each other and actually change. I believe that when women rise, the revolution will be won.